Hello, hello, and welcome back as we continue our heated hunt for an arbalest down in the slimy sewers and slick and spillways of Perfidious Manor in Darkest Dungeon. And I've got to say, our hard target search for an arbalest is not going very well at all. Despite our Tommy Lee Jones-like dedication to always catching our man, we've yet to turn up one who's wielding a crossbow and looking to kill. It seems like every time we get close, our arbalest just leaps down one of the manor's slick and spillways and into the river, and we yet again find ourselves with no quality fourth position person to fill out Team Newbie here. Now, of course, theoretically, we could start without an arbalest and just roll with this plague doctor. The only problem with that is I hate plague doctors. Frankly, I'd rather have a one-armed woman than a plague doctor. I really would. And I know that a lot of folks think the plague doctor is a solid character, just kind of misunderstood. I, however, am not one of those people. Taking three turns to stack a bunch of blight on a unit simply isn't useful, and it's really the only damage dealing capability that the Plague Doctor has. As to why it's not useful, let me just uh, throw out a little formula here. Even if you leave something alive long enough for the Plague Doctor to load it up with a full stack of blight, and then let that blight tick out to its fullest, it will still do less aggregate damage than just having an average damage dealing class like, I don't know, say a Grave Robber, hit it with their base attack on each of those turns. Just having a kind of average damage dealing class hit that same target once around for the same number of rounds does more aggregate damage. Also, the other thing that's very important that I think gets overlooked a lot, there's no resistance against sword or dagger in the eye. Sure, weapon attacks have an accuracy roll to hit and sometimes they do miss and there is the dodge thing, but the Plague Doctor has those same things as well. Accuracy and dodge also applies to the Plague Doctor's attack. It's just once the Plague Doctor actually hits, rather than doing guaranteed damage, he has another check to see if he actually does damage because sometimes that Blight's just going to get resisted. And now I know some people don't use the Plague Doctor to do damage at all, they just use him as a buff unit, but again, the buff that you're getting out of that person is still less useful than you can get as far as damage capacity and killing things capacity than just having a basic average damage class actually try and kill something. They also have stuns. Sure, one might make the case that uh, stuns are useful, but I would much rather an enemy just be dead than be stunned. So, sorry, Plague Doctor. I hate to break it to you, but you just need to come to grips with the fact that you suck, and that's the reason I don't want you on my team. That being said, I'm still probably going to roll out with a Plague Doctor on this run, if only to sort of prove my point. So, let's get some names here for our two new recruits, neither of which is an Arbalest, but, uh, well, you can't, uh, can't get everything you want, and as a, a wise man once said, you know, it can't rain all the time. That wise man was also killed while making the film in which he delivered that dialogue, so perhaps his wisdom is somewhat questionable, but I digress. We get a uh, leper here, and I think clearly as we're going for sort of a literary thing here, there has been no greater, wep no greater leper in the history of literature than Ron Weasley. Because despite being an all-around badass and a generally likable chap with a pretty good sense of humor, Ron Weasley gets shit on in every single one of the Harry Potter models, uh, novels, rather. He just, if, if there's a character who was going to get a nice steamy dump taken right in their mouth, Ron Weasley was always there, jaws agape, waiting for somebody to complete taking that shit. So, sure, he wound up with Hermione, so I guess he didn't catch every single dump that anybody took, but, you know, most of them, Ron Weasley got him. So, Ron Weasley, welcome aboard, you leprous bastard. Honestly, I feel sorry for you. I think you're leperized and pariahized more so than you deserved, sir. You were ill-treated by Miss Rowling, but it is what it is. And as for our Plague Doctor here, we're keeping with our mad scientist theme. This is going to be Susan McAllister. Now, most of you are probably going, who the fuck is Susan McAllister? And you're right to do so. Very kind of minor character. But if you've ever seen the film Deep Blue Sea, you know exactly who I'm talking about. And given her activities in that movie, and the fact that I fucking despise Plague Doctors, I think you'll find that Susan McAllister really is the perfect name. So let's head down to our embarkation point, take a look at our missions. I don't want to really mess with the Sonar's Prophet, the Inchoate Flesh, or the Brigand 8-Pounder, although there is an ancestral relic for the Brigand 8-Pounder. I'm interested, but I'm not, if that makes sense, and it absolutely doesn't make sense, but... I want to do those, and I want to do them very soon. I just don't feel we have a team that's up to it yet, and I'd rather not have anybody be dead. Except for Susan McAllister. I really don't care if she lives or dies. But uh, I guess alive is better, especially if I'm going to spend money on her. So I'm just going to unlock every ability here. We can't rank up these abilities for these two newbies. 
But we can make sure they have the abilities we want them to have. So we've got that sorted. We can't upgrade their gear. I do want to take Garrett Jackson, Florence Nightingale in here because they have some upgrades available. Crush, I don't care about. Rampart, I actually quite like. Defender is the shit. Retribution is fantastic. And Bolster, want both of those upgraded. Let's get old Flow Town here. Get her upgraded as well. Just sort of the four key abilities for Floto. We're going to take him over to the Blacksmith. Do their armor as well. Nice and cheap early on to start out. We want these guys. They're going to be carrying this team, and we need them in the best possible position to do that carrying. If they weren't rank zero, I would actually go for some of the, like the Brigand 8 Pounder. These are the Inchoate Flesh. I'm pretty sure we could take them. I don't want to do it with the Plague Doctor, though. If I had an Arbalester, I'd absolutely do it. Even at rank zero, I would. But since these guys are rank zero, what we're going to do instead is try and do either a medium or a long green mission. Just to get them ranked up a bit. Lucky dice for the Jester are crap. Survival Guide. That's terrible, actually. Unless you put it on a Resolve rank six guy, that's one of the worst trinkets I've ever seen. A steady Bracer also is fucking terrible. What are you? A camper's helmet. Bounty hunter only. It's not good, but it is a green, and this is a medium mission. I don't like having to clean corrupted altars, though. It takes up inventory space. Eh, you know what? That's fine. We'll do this. This is a medium level mission. Let's do that. So we're going to take Garrett Jax, the weapons master, finally going to get to go do his thing. Garrett's going to be in our second slot. Ron Weasley, of course, in the lead, because, hey, if somebody needs to get punched in the face, Ron Weasley is there. Wherever a child is hungry, Ron Weasley won't be there. Wherever a second fiddle is preparing to get a shit taken on him by the main character, that's where you'll find Ron Weasley. Focus is pretty good. Revenge is actually pretty good, and also Withstand is honestly fucking amazing. I really like that ability. Solemnity, there's something to be said for that as well. Intimidate is quite good. I think I'm going to go with Chop, Hugh. Do I want that? Nah, revenge. I love Withstand, but I think early on Focus is probably going to be more important. Unless we have some plus accuracy trinkets we can put on this. Actually, don't we have a bunch of like really good leper only shit? I'm pretty sure we do. Yeah, we actually do. Fortunate Armlet. Plus 15 accuracy if in rank 1. Plus 1 crit minus 10% damage. We're going to wear at least one of those. Plus 15 damage if in rank 1 minus 2 accuracy. That's also really good. You know what? Yeah, let's... uh. Let's stack this shit up. We'll counter the damage off of this one. So we're getting, at, basically we're getting an extra 5% damage. We're getting an extra 13 accuracy and we're getting plus one crit with that combination. For a rank zero guy, that's pretty solid actually. Pretty damn solid indeed. So let's get our man at arms who I think actually our man at arms probably already is trinketed. He is not. Well, let's see if we don't have any man at arms only trinkets. Let's just uh, make do with what we can. So let's sort these by rarity. We have anything that's going to be useful for him? Bounty Hunter only. Ooh. Interesting. That's Grave Robber only. Anybody can wear that, but it's trash. Anybody can wear that, but it's trash. Plus 15% protection, plus 20% max HP. Yeah, uh, yes, please. We'll put that on our nice little... Uh, yeah, that'll, that'll be good on our Man at Arms. Do we have any other plus protection stuff? Plus protection is kind of what I'm looking for here. That Sniper's Ring is absolutely going on our Arbalest. Camouflage Cloak, Quick Draw Charm. Man, that's not so good. Hellion only, Grave Robber, Seer Stone. What are you? No, no. Do we have anything useful here? Come on, something. Gotta have something good. Doesn't this have a penalty to H? Actually, it's got a bonus to HP, but a penalty to dodge. We could offset this with a Shimmering Cloak. That's actually not a terrible, uh, terrible combination. Do we have anything that's plus protection that he can wear? Do we have any plus protection item that this unit can wear? We'll go with that. Doesn't look like we do, though. Bonus dodge. Uh, we have a protection stone, which gives a damage penalty. You know, honestly, I think we might be better off with that than the Shimmering Cloak. It is going to tank our dot. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. I want to go with the protection stone. I want to get as much protection on our Arbalester as I can. This guy's going to be seeing a lot of damage coming at him. So let's get him sorted. Our Plague Doctor. I, I got to assume we have a ton of Plague Doctor only items that we can just throw on this person, right? I hate Plague Doctors. I gotta I gotta assume we have a ton of them. Where, where's Plague Doctor? Bounty Hunter. Did we sell all of our Plague Doctor only stuff? I bet we sold it all. Pretty sure I sold it all, actually, now that I think about it. Because I fucking hate Plague Doctors. Yep, I absolutely sold it all. Didn't expect to be ever bringing a Plague Doctor. Plus 10 protection if Torch is above 75. 
Interesting. What can we put on this guy? We really kind of just need to give him accuracy. You know what? Yeah, let's do that. Let's put accuracy. We might just put two accuracy stones on him. Do we have anything that's like plus to blight leads or dodges or anything like that? We might. Sort by rarity, actually. If we do, it'll be at the top. Man, that ring is real good. Plus 30 to trap. Nah, it's grave robber only. Bounty hunter only. Here we go. Plus 30 black. Oh, that's plus. That's plus resist. We don't actually. We actively don't want that. Oh, uh, we do have a plus 30 blight resist. Plus, plus 30 bleed resist. How is this supposed to be useful? Uh, you know what? I don't even. At this point, I don't even care. I fucking hate plague doctors. I don't really give a shit what they have. Florence Nightingale. I don't know as we have any trinkets for Florence Nightingale to even wear. Sorties. Uh, we got this plus 10 percent vert. That's almost useless. The profane scroll is bad. I recall we discovered last time we had been equipping that and they changed it to make it fucking pretty much terrible. Plus 15 accuracy if in rank 4. Something to be said for maybe taking that. You know what? I like the camouflage. What, what does this do if it's dark? Nothing. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, let's go with the camouflage cloak and... What else have we got? Anything that's just anything at all that's useful. Anything that's maybe like plus heal? Like a healer's stone? Not really. Plus 10%. You know what? Yeah, it's, it's good enough. It, we're, we're not fucking saving the world here. This is a, a level one mission. It's just a medium. I'm probably, probably guilty of overthinking here. Not something I can commonly be accused of because I'm kind of a freewheeling jackass. And if you've watched much of my stuff at all, you know exactly how true the freewheeling jackass comment is. I'm going to take... Dude, I don't need all this food. I actually overspent on food last time. I'm going to go aggressive on food, but I'm not going to go crazy. One of everything else, and I'm going to take just 10. I'm going to take 12 torches. That's good. We shouldn't have a whole lot of trouble breaking even on this. And honestly, all I really care about is resolve EXP. That's really my only concern for this team. And mostly just getting another mission under our belt so we can get another shot at a damn Arbalest. Been like three missions down. One of them hasn't shown up. I'm starting to think maybe Arbalest is just really shy, that uh, maybe she has a, a shyness problem, which, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with being shy. A lot of people are shy. Is there any, uh, three corrupted altars. This dungeon layout's actually okay. Normally i prone to complaining, but I kind of like this one. It's pretty damn linear. Who's getting stressed? Plague Doctor getting stressed. Anybody's getting stressed, it's Dr. Susan McAllister, because, uh, well, she created hyper-intelligent sharks, because that's a fucking good idea, and something one should do. I'd like to point out he stepped on that trap, got hit by it, and took zero damage because fucking men-at-arms are awesome and protection kicks ass. Little walking tank he is. Spirits are lifted. Spirits are lifted. Purpose, is made, purpose is made clear. As opposed to purpose being made murky, which is typically the way I like it. I'm often of murky purpose. You're just gonna move back. Our Plague Doctor can't operate from the fourth position. I'm not even sure I switched our Plague Doctor skills. That's how little I fucking care. It looks like I absolutely did not. Um, sure. Blinding gas. Why not? There you can see it did no damage and stunned one of our targets. Mortality Eight point a critical strike. is a little unfortunate for the man at arms. Susan McAllister taking a bite, resisting the blight. All right, so what do we want to do here? We are absolutely going to retribution. This man. Bam. It's going to mark him, give us a boost to protection. Which we like. There's the stun. So that's what our Plague Doctor contributed. Somebody didn't get bitten as a result of his actions. What's our chance to hit here? 66% is frankly not good enough. Even with the bonus, huh? Yeah, you know what? It's gonna be a double kill, and right there, folks, is why the Plague Doctor is shit. Lepers are common as dirt, and that guy did more damage than his Plague Doctor is gonna do for the entire length of this mission. Let's just go ahead and Retribution. Three damage. They did do some nerfs, of course, to the Man-at-Arms since the last time I played. They have gotten quite a bit more powerful, quite a bit less tanky. Repost is still fantastic, as you can see, however. Why has our Vestal not gotten a chance to go? Get a Battlefield Medicine U. Yes, folks, he healed for a whopping one point. A one point heal. Fantastic output from the Plague Doctor. So far, we got a guy not bitten once as a result of the stun and healed for one fucking damage. Uh, let's go for the nice little rampart there. It does very little damage, does the Rampart, but that's okay. We're not in it for the damage. You know, we could use a Divine Comfort here. Get some healing across the board, and let's see if our Leper can close things out. There we go. 
So the Leopard delivers, and based on the difficulty we had in that fight, given the caliber of foe we were up against, I gotta say, I'm not filled with a lot of hope. So what do we want to do here? You know what? I know exactly what I'm going to do here. This may sound ridiculous, much like Elvis and Jack Nicholas being once the very best of friends and solving mysteries together. I'm going to camp. I'm going to camp right now. I want this out of my inventory, and I want some of the buffs that our units have. So let's take a look at our man-at-arms, who has some of the greatest buffs in the game. I mean, they're ridiculously powerful. Specifically, weapons practice, and that shit's going right on our nice little man there. He's going to be dramatically more powerful. Plus 10 dodge for all companions. Yes, please. And then let's see what everybody else can do. Self only. Man, we don't need that. Bloody Shroud. He'll... Eh, we don't care. Not, not really good. Can you bless? You can. Plus 10 accuracy, plus 10 dodge. What's going on our leper? We need our leper hitting things that he swings at. Plague Doctor, can you do anything useful? You can leech someone. That's not useful. You can do preventative medicine. That's somewhat of dubious usefulness. Or you could give a pep talk, which is, again, not particularly useful. We could pray. That's going to do a stress reduction, however, that we don't really need. Hmm. Quarantine. If we needed stress resist, I would absolutely quarantine, but we really kind of don't. Uh, let's just encourage the plague doctor then, and I guess we'll have the plague doctor preventative medicine, let's say our armsman here, who's going to be getting hit a lot. So there we go. All done. Plenty of blood left to shed this day, says Plaguey McPlaguester. Susan McAllister, plenty of blood left to be shed indeed. If it wasn't for Thomas Jane, your ass would be dead. Also, LL Cool J certainly contributed, despite spending a good deal of the film locked inside of a oven. He still got some stuff done. Probably should have reordered my party as well as reordered my skills. I'm really not paying attention because, uh, well, Plaguey McPlague Doctor is part of the party and I don't like Plague Doctors. I may have said that once or twice. Probably have said that at least once or twice. Uh, go for the kill here on this Bone Cordier. I would prefer to not get stress. Stress is sort of going to be our limit breaker on this one. We're going to try and minimize it as much as we can since we have already camped. So immediately getting hit by 20 stress is a fantastic start for that. Disorienting Blast is all you can do from the front, huh? I hate Plague Doctor so much. So much. So we're going to spend a turn. That's the one other complaint I have about lepers as well. They do not do well if pushed out of the first two ranks. A bad surprise can really hurt a leper quite a bit. Nice repose from our armsman. Another tempting goblet. So our leper has accumulated 40 stress already. That's most unfortunate. All right, let's go for, uh, well, you know, it worked once. Let's do it again. Go for the repost. Man at arms is doing his thing. Three damage from Susan McAllister, who actually managed to get a kill. Gonna go for the Judgment, get a little bit of healing there as well. That's fine. Good start on damage. Leper with the miss, which, eh, it's unpleasant, but what are you gonna do? You try again, that's what you do, and you get a 25 damage critical that gets you back a whole bunch of the stress you absorb. Fantastic. Taking it all. We're gonna burn, uh, I was gonna say we're gonna burn a torch, but our light level is actually now at full. And let's have a Holy Fountain, I believe. Holy what? Yeah, there we go. So, got rid of some stress, got a nice heal, and that's going to put our Leper right back where we need him. Let's check everybody's skills here. Leper, good. Man-at-arms, I know is good. Plague Doctor, there's really no way to fucking fix him. Let's take a look, though. Noxious Blast, I guess we can keep it. Plague Grenade. That ability is so bad. It's still better than Noxious Blast, though. Blinding Gas, again, of dubious usefulness. Incision actually is okay. Uh, I don't like blinding gas. It does no damage. It does no damage. And it has a base stun of 100. Which means it's a zero damage attack that only works about a two... That only works about three quarters of the time. I'd rather have battlefield medicine and emboldening vapors. I really would. So that's what I'm going to go with. And our Vestal, I know. Yeah, she's solid. All right. This ain't Florence Nightingale's first fucking rodeo. Florence Nightingale knows what goes on on the battlefield. We got a confessional booth. We don't have holy water. Let's hold it. Ooh, what are you? A corrupted... Oh, it's this thing. All right, well, there you go. Glad we came this way then. Turns out we needed to come this way, and that's going to save us some backtracking. We've been in a lot of fights for being this early in the dungeon. I'm a little nonplussed by the number of enemies we have encountered thus far. Look at that. Blazing one fucking damage, folks. That's right, one damage. When you need the high stress relieving attacks taken out early, one damage is exactly what you're hoping to find. Gotta hate Plague Doctors. Uh, you know what? Retribution. Yeah. 
these guys, it's going to be such overkill. Revenge probably isn't worth it. Let's... Yeah, go ahead and uh, give me the... Uh, give me the retribution here. We'll take it. Give me the mark. He has no stress. We're going to hope that uh, we get targets there. This guy has got to die. So, four damage. I'd like to point out that the bleed damage would not be enough to kill this guy. Even if the bleed were to go off. And the bleed attack, or the blight attack, rather. When I said bleed, I meant blight. Never even had a chance to do anything. Incision is arguably the Plague Doctor's single fucking best attack. And it's terrible. It's a low damage bleed attack. And that's that's the best they can do. It's the best they got, folks. The best they got. Wow, at the rate I'm dumping on the Plague Doctor, really, I should have named the Plague Doctor fucking Ron Weasley. He's the one getting shit on. Anyway, let's continue onward, upward. Nice little trap on our way back. Ron Weasley can take it. Because taking it is what a good Ron Weasley does. Um, wow, okay. I'm good. All right. I'm, uh, Dacnomania is removed. I'm, I'm okay with that. Was hoping more for stress relief there, but honestly, anything that wasn't a negative quirk or a ton of stress is totally acceptable. Any positive outcome is fine. Gonna keep our light level high. These books. Uh, Plague Doctor. It's a dangerous, mysterious stack of books. So, of course, you get a positive quirk. You're a natural eye. Well, that'll come in handy. You can do some massive critical damage. When you critical, it still does like six. Blanket fire, I don't like. We gotta get rid of these blanket firing bastards. Alright, so light those guys up for all the good it's gonna do. It might tick once if we're lucky, because I need them dead faster. Good dodge from Ron Weasley. Ron clearly employing the invisibility cloak to dodge that attack. Must have borrowed it from Harry. Four damage. We gotta get these guys targeting our man-at-arms if we can. Let's do a group heal. We're all pretty banged up after the blanket fires. We could use some aggregate healing. A little slice and dice. Double dodge, eight damage repost, which is fantastic. Leper's gonna hew for the kill. That's a good solid shot from old Ron Weasley. That's right, Ron Weasley doing work. Doing some work, just like in those novels. Ron Weasley was a fucking underappreciated workhorse. Good work there, Plague Doctor. I'd like to thank you for that kill. Oh, no, wait, it wasn't the Plague Doctor. It was the fucking man-at-arms who does all our heavy lifting. Shut up, Susan McAllister. I, I can feel your look. I know you're looking at me from behind that mask because I'm giving you a lot of shit. But frankly, let's face it, you deserve that shit. Fatal damage thanks to the Plague Doctor. So the Plague Doctor actually contributed something. Two turns into the fight. Finally did something right. Don't let it go to your head. Don't let it go to your head. Um, eh, repost is fine. We're good. A thousand gold. That's quite solid. A sun cloak. Eh. They did fix the sun cloak, so they do actually work correctly now, which is nice. But, uh, not really something I'm interested in having anyone don. Ron Weasley couldn't wear a sun cloak because, in, you know, something was called a sun cloak in the... Uh-oh. I cut quite the heroic figure, do I not? Well, considering you found treasure in there, you'll be keeping this reward for yourself. Well, fuck you. You found literally the shittiest thing in the dungeon to steal, Ron Weasley. Which kind of seems appropriate for Ron Weasley. I mean, that guy was always getting shit on, and hey, this is no exception to that rule. Lord's Knight yells a little damage. Let's ever put some damage on this Bone Arbaluster. These guys only have a 10% stun resist? That's terrible. Those guys have no stun resist. We should really switch our Plague Doctor skills up. Nice kill. Good start for Garrett Jax. That's a nice opener. I'm relying on uh, our... Leper here to probably kill both of these bone guys with his opening move. He got damn close. Not quite all the way home, but he got damn close. So our Plague Doctor has combined for four damage. He was literally outshone by a single repost from the man-at-arms. And he's going to be outshone by pretty much everyone else on the mission also. Some solid healing in... Yeah, you know what? Fine. With the Blight, is that fatal? It is. It's not going to matter because the leper's still there to clean up what mess Dr. Susan McAllister left behind. Ordinarily cleaning up her messes requires you to fucking face off against a bunch of hyper-intelligent sharks, but in this case, our leper got lucky and just was able to club a bandit to death instead. I really want to buy the leper a sword that's not broken. Just throwing that out there. Kind of feel bad for the poor guy. Uh, you know what? If we kill one of these Bone Rabble early, which we didn't, but had we done that, it would have given our Leper a chance to hew into the Arbalests from behind. 
<laughs> Ron Weasley, he's a backdoor man. Am I right, Hermione? <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't know as anything about the sexual escapades of Ron Weasley, and frankly, I don't want to know. Good solid output from Ron Weasley. Starting things off nicely. Let's go for the repost on the Bone Soldier. He hasn't gone yet. Let's get him out of the order and the queue. This should make these two Arbalists tend to target him. Uh, just emboldening Vapors, actually. At this point, it's probably the best thing you can do. We're going to need to put a big heal on the plate here. Okay, sure. Do it again. Does that stack? It does stack. So a big bonus damage if uh, we can, you know what, do a guard here, actually. If we can, by some miracle, get a, uh, a connect there with our leper, this is going to be fatal damage for both of them, almost guaranteed. Nice one damage from the uh, solid protection. Wow, that's considerably less impressive than I had hoped it would be. Going to put a heal on uh, Dr. Susan McAllister there from Florence Nightingale, an actual doctor. Just, whatever, Plague Doctor. Just do whatever it is that you're going to do. I don't, I don't, I don't care what you do. I really don't care what you do, Susan McAllister. As long as it's not making hyper-intelligent sharks keep LL Cool J pinned inside of a uh, oven with his parrot, I don't, I don't really give a shit. I really don't. The greatest scene in that movie, out of the way, was uh, from Samuel L. Jackson, right before he was, well, shortly before he was devoured by a shark. Actually, one of the greatest, uh, greatest inspirational speeches in the history of moviedom, that movie, actually. Let's burn this torch. I want the crests, I don't need the Adids, that's fine. Can't really afford it. I would like to eat with the Plague Doctor just to get some healing on, but we have a lot of dungeon left to cover, and I don't want to risk being out of food when a starvation prompt arises, so we're going to hold off on healing. So, of course, Dr. Susan McAllister leaps herself face first into a trap. That's fucking solid thinking right there. Why don't you check out this bookshelf, too? I mean, while we're doing stupid shit with you, let's just pile it on. You can do all kinds of stupid shit. You can check out this pack, Dr. Susan McAllister. You can inject uh, sharks with some kind of hypothetical and uh, experimental anti-Alzheimer's medication. All those things are good. You can sleep with your boss. That's always a genius idea. To do that as well. We're going to try and go for a critical kill. Didn't quite get it. It was pretty unlikely it would have had to start with a critical. Tempting goblet on my man-at-arms I don't like. Stop. Don't don't ever do that again, Bone Courtier. Never again. Also, your stress attacks on uh, Florence Nightingale, that, that shit should also stop. Gonna go ahead and go for the retribution there. A little repost on the acolyte. Rending for the old god, Ron Weasley. Man, that Ron Weasley is a dexterous son of a bitch. Holy shit, our plague doctor did something positive. He actually is gonna get a kill with that blight. Nothing compared to the massive blow that Ron Weasley just landed, I'd like to point out, but still, the plague doctor managed to positively contribute. Prodigious size alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. Yeah, per sure, prodigious size doesn't shape sharpened blade, but it's not all about size, Mr. Narrator. It's not always about the size of the dog in the fight. Sometimes it's about the size of the fight in dog. You do well to remember that, sir. Uh, an unbelievable uh, huge amount of damage from our Plague Doctor. Wow. Plague Doctor clearly trying to make a case for the fact that them are, for them being not completely and totally useless, but sorry, Plague Doctor, I'm not going to be easily convinced. Literally any other class would be doing just as fine a job in that slot. I could have a Crusader there and he would be doing just as good. Also, you're nearly dead. Uh, fine. Eat some of our food for next to no healing because you suck. God, I hate you, Susan McAllister. I hate you so much. Give me the 25 gold and let's just move on. If we're going to leave anybody behind in this dungeon with uh, a lifeless corpse, it's going to be Dr. Susan McAllister, and I'm not going to feel the least bit bad about it. Not even a little. Won't feel guilty at all. Although, theoretically, we do want to get this Plague Doctor at some point, take them to level 6. That's going to be a fun time. We should really just leave these books alone, but uh, Dr. Susan McAllister's already going in for stress relief. I'm not going to leave any stone unturned. We probably can't do that again. Should have definitively burned a torch here, but I've got a pretty strong feeling we're going to be okay. Florence Nightingale doing the actual doctoring here, pulling out a massive critical heal. Solid damage output from Garrett Jackson. Arguably, we should have had him swing at the rank 3 bone soldier. Wouldn't have mattered, though. Ron Weasley did not do quite enough damage to get the kill, so uh, arguably it would not have made much of a difference. We'll just take a cheap kill here with the Plague Doctor for stress relief, which she kind of needed. That's how shit gets done right there. Fantastic work from our man-at-arms. Taking a little bit of damage, 
but dealing out oh oh so much that was a deadly devastating blow and i'm surprised that the narrator didn't remark upon it by the way mr narrator you kind of dropped the ball on that one it was a fantastic move from the weapons master and you didn't say shit i won't have you disrespecting the weapons master mr narrator i simply will not have it you will give him all respect he is due at all times we're down to four food yeah florence nightingale's gonna check this one out what do you got flow town some stress that's what you got your history of sin is too much to bear well that's unfortunate but on the plus side free inventory slot purified altar we should be getting some pretty quality uh pretty quality uh resolve exp out of this as well reasonable amounts this is a long mission for even a medium it's pretty long i think we could probably go for the bone soldier here it's hoping for a critical did get it ends the breaks we should definitely go for the retro, uh, the repost kill here. We got it. Doing work, Garrett Jax, the weapons master. The man was the deadliest man in all of literature. Seriously, he one on one killed a Jachira. That's no joke. Thing took down Alanon for crying out loud, but Garrett Jax, he brought it low. Guy wasn't fucking around. What ability to use here? Honestly, I think emboldening vapors probably our best bet here for making this really count it did like an extra one damage as a result so i'm glad we took the time to throw it that was a quality investment of company resources right there McAllister with a lucky dodge leper getting skipped that's unfortunate but such is life let's go ahead and throw a blight at this guy for no particular reason other than that we can Bayonet jab. Ron Weasley is not impressed by a bayonet jab. That guy suffered way worse injuries at the hands of his friends than a jab with a bayonet. Shit, Harry Potter's damn near killed him more times than that. Nice repost. Good dodge from Garrett Jax with the follow through. I'm proud of you, Garrett. At least somebody's pulling their damn weight around here. It's clearly not Susan McAllister, by the way. I hate you so much, Plague Doctor. A singular strike. Yeah, sure. Critical at the point when it doesn't count. You bring in the huge critical when the guy's already at death's door. Or hewing. Ron Weasley is not doing a very impressive amount of damage here. That's okay, though, because Garrett Jax is going to get a massive critical kill. Again, you might say, well, it's, he was already at death's door. But in this instance, you got to give him credit for it because he's the one who put that guy on death's door. So, you know, that's, that credit still goes to Garrett Jax. He still gets credited with the win. I'm actually quite pleased to find the extra two food. An heirloom chest. I'm still going to use a key on it. Crests? Eh, some crests. You know what? Uh, yeah, we'll, I'll take the bus for now, but in all likelihood, they're getting thrown on the floor. Actually, no, wait. We need busts. I don't remember for what. Sanitarium, perhaps? We. I think we still need busts. So, these books. Ron, check them out. The pages are unsettling. Yeah, probably pages of Hermione's journal. And Ron read about how Hermione really feels about him and that she's desperately in love with Harry. But since Harry couldn't be dissuaded from the svelte Jenny Weasley, Ron wound up uh, kind of being second fiddle and, uh, let's face it, Hermione settled. She settled. She knows it. Ron knows it, frankly. And it's eating at him, fucking chewing his heart up like a cancer, the knowledge. She belonged with Harry. It's just Harry loved another. Then again... Now that I think about it, perhaps the whole Ginny Weasley thing was an entirely clever ploy, entirely constructed and executed by Ron. It could be one of the most perfect ploys in the history of literature. Ron wanted Hermione, knew he would never outcompete Harry Potter, and his only chance was if Harry spurned Hermione for another. And so Ron Weasley came up with the whole introduce Harry to my sister plan. It could work. Now I gotta wonder if maybe the time that Harry Potter saved her jenny weasley's life the kind of the, the start of their relationship there do you think it was voldemort who orchestrated that or now are you thinking maybe ron was behind it all along secretly i'm not happy about the critical shank i am happy about the massive reposting that our man at arms is doing he's doing some fucking brilliant work for us still though now you gotta kind of wonder you gotta kind of wonder just a little bit did ron weasley set it all up of course the cure failed susan McAllister fucking invented that cure are you expecting it to work uh, Garrett Jack's picking up another kill thanks entirely to Susan McAllister's failure, I'd like to point out there. Good sweet goddamn Garrett Jax is just tearing the world apart. He's literally dismantling this entire dungeon single-handedly. 
He killed every single person that died in that fight. Garrett Jax slew every last one of them. Every last one. Otherworldly corruption. Yeah, yeah, otherworldly corruption. So I'm gonna use that bandage just to kind of get it out of our inventory. That's worth a thousand gold. Let's take the caution cloak as opposed to... I actually prefer to take the onyx too. You know what? Let's get rid of that anti-venom. We do have an... You know, we probably don't need that shovel. Well, I probably shouldn't have thrown it on the floor just yet, but we have more shovels than we're gonna use. That thing's really just been kind of taking up space for a while now. Burn a couple torches, probably the last two we'll need. Wouldn't mind finding the final objective at some point here. Been wandering around for a while. The last one is pretty damn deep in a dungeon. I'm glad I threw that shovel on the floor, because now we're going to use one. That's quality thinking. An extra 650 gold, which would have paid for that shovel twice over, but... Still, actually, that shovel we found anyway. Not really a big deal. His efficacy unwitnessed by his own eyes. You know, a trap maker could easily witness his own efficacy, Mr. Narrator. It's not like those traps were fucking untested. Don't you think a quality trap maker goes through like a design and prototyping phase? I'm pretty sure at some point he's seen what that trap can do before he had the temerity to sell it. I mean, that's just quality engineering and just all around sound business practice. Yeah, of course, the one time Susan McAllister could have done something good with some damage there and gotten a blight on that bone cordier to put fatal damage on him before he had a chance to go. What happens? Complete fucking abject failure. That's what happens. That's why I hate Plague Doctors. Damage delayed is not as good as damage now, especially when that damage never fucking eventually shows up. We're in a bit of a tough spot here. We need more healing than we kind of have access to. We're going for the repost. Was hoping we'd get lucky and maybe kill that guy before he got a chance to swing. No dice, though. Susan McAllister with a very lucky dodge, which is really all she's got going for her. I mean, if she can't fucking hit or do anything useful, she better at least be able to look the shit out. Your, yeah, your resolve is tested. What a surprise. Susan McAllister has become irrational. Who'd have fucking thought? Nice zero damage attack there. At least you got the fucking blight, so that's fatal damage. Nobody else is going to get a goblet of blood thrown into their face. Ron Weasley's still doing some solid work for us. Journeyman service. We gotta go for the repost here. We need him swinging at Garrett Jacks if at all possible. Susan McAllister is raving like an idiot. Man, Ron Weasley is in fucking real bad shape. So we get a tiny heal on everybody. I was hoping we might get lucky and pull a critical there, but no dice. I want that guy dead. I can't have another stress attack. Susan McAllister is already going to be boat anchoring us in the stress department. Applying a lot of stress we don't necessarily need. Whatever, McAllister. I don't give a shit what you do at this point. You're marked. You marked yourself. That's fucking brilliant, I guess. Awarded to the brave and the foolhardy alike. Well, we definitely have foolhardy covered in this party, Mr. Narrator. I'm not so sure about brave yet. Foolhardy, though? We got that shit in spades, sir. In spades. We're going to burn the last of these torches. The match is struck. And the let's have Garrett Jack smash this. Can, I can't, oh, because we already smashed it open. Never mind. We're backtracking here. I thought this was a new cabinet, but it is not. It's the same cabinet again. Onward we go then. Final room. I'm a little worried about our. Ch what are what are you? Oh, this thing. I'm not fighting a shambler with a plague doctor. I'm just not. I'm not doing it. If you put a torch on this, something good happens. I am not fighting the shambler though. The shambler is something new they've added in the most recent update. It's sort of like a mini boss boss. It can appear at random in any dungeon as an interactable. If you touch that with a torch, it brings out the shambler. The shambler is a remarkably difficult monster. It is stupefyingly tough. And definitely not something you're going to want to do with a sort of low-level group, one of whom is already at the potential for heart attack because stress is a big part of that fight. So we're going to eat what remains of our food. At this point, we can't really get a... You know what? No. You're only going to heal one. He's full. It's better... Yeah, you know what? We're better off to have Garrett Jacks eat the food. Susan McAllister, you can starve. Also, you're kind of a waif-like gal. You probably don't eat much, really. And that's in... Okay, so end of mission then. We could have gone for the Shambler just to kind of show it off, but this would have resulted in every single one of these people getting killed. If we had failed to run away from the Shambler after we summoned it, all of us would have died. I am fully confident it would have been a complete party wipe. And I would prefer to avoid that for now. If we could have just fed it Susan McAllister to guarantee our escape, we could have... I would have absolutely gone that route. But, uh... Unfortunately, that's not an option for us. We did purify the altars. Mission success, 7,100 gold. 
ton of stress for everybody involved. They're all going in for stress relief. It makes me a little unhappy that I have to spend money on stress relief for Susan McAllister, but, uh, say la vie. Nervous paranormania? Paranormania. Obsessed with the paranormal. Eagle eye? Um, that's not really that useful. For a man-at-arms, but it beats a negative quirk, which he also got nervous, is actually quite bad. Stout, Susan McAllister, managed to get a positive quirk, and it's one of the shittiest ones in the game. Seems appropriate. So off we go, back to the Hamlet itself. Let's put in our team Mubi here. They're all going in for stress relief, because at this point, they have no choice. Garrett, didn't you pick up some kind of... Yeah, you only drink now. I'm not, you know, not uh, having a problem with that, Garrett Jax. Take a drink or two. Florence Nightingale doesn't really care what she does. You're a dud hitter, huh? Well, of course you are, Susan McAllister. Of course you are. Ron Weasley. Obsessed with self-worship. Ron Weasley likes to masturbate, I think, is uh, is what we can... I should say self... Self-abuse. Ron Weasley. Then again, if you're Ron Weasley, I mean, it's not like you're a huge hit with the ladies, what with the unruly mop of ginger hair and Hermione being completely obsessed with Harry Potter. So, you know, a little self-abuse probably seems appropriate. We're gonna have Ron Weasley meditate. And by meditate, I mean just go into the cloister and masturbate furiously while dreaming of Hermione. And engineering a plan to make sure that Harry Potter falls in love with someone else. Orange Nightingale's gonna pray. Susan McAllister, I don't really care what you do. You know what? Go to the flagellation hall. It costs a fortune. I don't care. I just want somebody to beat you with a whip. And now it's time to pull that lever on the one-armed bandit and see if we nail the jackpot or once again are stuck with a piece of shit team. Come on, Arbalest. Come on, come on. Damn it! This game hates me. It really does. It hates me. Specifically, it has a, a particular vendetta against me, specifically. Still no Arbalest. 22 slots on our roster. None of them have an Arbalest in them. Not a one. I think I'm going to pick up the second man-at-arms, though. So we will take newbie Vaughn. We'll get him a name next time, of course. For now, once again, cock-blocked in the Arbalest department. Still no, still no Arbalest, which means once these guys get out of stress relief, we're going to have to roll out with probably Susan McAllister at least one more time. And believe me, I'm no more happy about it than you are. But that's what we got. That's the hand we've been dealt. We're going to have to make the best we can. It's like getting 7-2 offsuit in Hold'em. Sometimes you just got to bluff and hope nobody notices. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up. Of course, if you enjoyed the episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comments section. Your support really does mean a lot to us. And if you'd like to see more Darkest Dungeon, including the continuing exploits of Susan, I am a worthless piece of shit, Plague Doctor McAllister, and Ron, I am a cleverly manipulative genius, Weasley, consider subscribing as well. Right now, however, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you again soon.